Well, let's talk about how resistors work. So resistors are probably the simplest component um, that we use in electronics, and they all look fairly similar, though you can see there are differences. We'll, we'll talk about, um, let's see, well, if you see one in a schematic, it will look like that, something like that, okay? And every resistor out there is going to have two uh, wires coming off of it, and there's not really an in and an out, because all that's inside a resistor is just some material that resists or opposes the flow of electrons. Okay, so it doesn't matter which way the current goes through, it gets resisted the same amount. So some resistors might just be a whole bunch of wire wrapped up around. So we know that for a DC, um, a DC current, the longer the wire is, it has to pass through, the more resistance because as it travels, it bounces into things. And so if you try to run DC current over like 100 feet, you know, it's going to have a hard time making it from one end to the other. That's my voltmeter beeping, I think. Some resistors, like this guy, uh, they're just going to have a, um, I believe, I believe it's carbon on the inside. Um, and just sort, sort of like what's in a pencil. If you break up a pen and in, break into a pencil and it has that graphite, um, it'd be nice if I had a broken pencil, but we'll just have to be delicate. Uh, this is a voltmeter set to ohm setting and um, I wonder if the batteries are coming out. Perhaps, I'm not sure. It's just kind of going crazy on me. Anyway, let's see if we can measure resistance across a piece of pencil. So I saw it, I saw it at about 130 ohms. We'll see, it'll change as I move it around. Okay, we'll go with that. So the it read, if this was the pencil, 38 ohms. And what is an ohm? Well. It's just a unit that we've assigned to represent how much resistance something has. And if you want to know what's, um, how did we come up with how much one ohm is, well, it would be one volt over one amp. Um, so that'll become clear. Um, we talk about the purpose of a resistor, and I said it's to resist electric current. So we also have voltage, um, and if we were to apply some voltage across this resistor, remember that voltage doesn't flow, current flows, voltage is a electric potential difference, and we'll signify the current that little arrow. Um, if you know how much voltage there is and you know what the resistance is, you can figure out how much current will be like permitted to flow based on the resistance. And um, let's do one instead of the 38 ohms, let's do one with a 1 ohm because that's even simpler. So let's say we have a 10 volt source and we go into a 1 ohm resistor, how much current will flow? Um, it will be exactly, it'll be 10 amps. Um, and there's just 
we have this equation that defines this for us uh, called Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law is used all throughout electronics in various ways because everything comes back to voltage resistance and current. We see from Ohm's Law that if the voltage was 10 and the resistance was 1, then the current would be 10 over 1 or 10, so I equals 10 amps. We'll go back to this one. If the voltage here was still 10 and the current or the uh, resistance was 38, then the current is 10 over 38, which is a little over a third. Let's call that 34. Let's see. Um, 340 millivolts. I could be wrong. I just did that in my head. But it'll be around that. Okay, so um, whenever we want to establish some current flow, we can, and we know what the voltage is, we can pick out a particular resistor to uh, that will resist um, the current enough to give us that voltage. Or, um, to give us that, that current flow. Anyway, um, the thing is, we have to be somewhat choosy about our resistor values because it takes a mechanical process to build these things, and you can't just have a 38 ohm resistor and a 39 ohm resistor and a 40 ohm resistor and a 41 and a half ohm resistor, right, um, in order to manufacture them and, and in a sensible way we have some standard values that are you know, mostly comprehensive. We jump from 2.2 ohms to 2.7 ohms, for example, and then, well, I don't have the ones in between, but um, there, there are standard values and repeating values. So you'll see 2.2 ohms, and then 22 ohms, and then 220 ohms, and then 2.2 thousand ohms. So why is that? You know, why don't we make a two and a half ohm resistor? Because, I mean, two and a half sounds like a pretty reasonable, or, or a five ohm resistor. Why not a five ohm? Okay, so um, it comes back down to practicality when you're machining these things. Um, you can make them more cheaply if you aren't as precise. So at first that sounds bad. But if you think about it, if you can build your resistors to work within 10% of or 5% uh, even of their rated value, um, the electronics are going to work out almost, you know, almost ideally. And so, a resistor that's 5% out of tolerance is not going to have a, a very negative impact on your circuit. Um, and so, that's why we don't have a 2.5 ohm resistor in only a 2.2 and a 2.7, because 10% uh, more than 2.2 uh, and 10% less than 2.7 actually overlap. So it's possible you could pick up a resistor out of either of these bags, and it might be 2.5 ohms. Um, and that's why we don't have a 2.5 ohm resistor. They don't say exactly what their resistance is right on them, or at least not on these small ones, because it's like a little cylindrical package, and you honestly couldn't even write that on there. So they, have to, they had to come up with a different way of signifying uh, what value the resistor was built with. And they created a resistor color code system. And it goes kind of like the rainbow, but not, not exactly. So um, each stripe, each color represents a number. And there are three numbers on this resistor plus a fourth one, which actually is the tolerance. Uh, that is... Um, how closely this resistor holds to the value that they sold it to you at. 
So if it's rated, this one is for uh, 47,000 ohms, and it has a gold band, and we have, it's either going to be gold or silver. Um, you shouldn't you rarely see anything else. That's plus or minus 5%. Silver is plus or minus 10%. Most resistors these days are plus or minus 5%. This is gold. Um, but there's three other colors on here. So I'm going to go through the list. We start with uh, black. And then, so this is zero. The color for one is brown. If you see a one, or if you see brown, that means a one. Two is um, red. Three is orange. Four is yellow. So from at this point, it's pretty much a rainbow. Red, orange, yellow. Five is green. Six is blue. Seven is, we don't have like, you know, indigo and violet. You could call it violet, I just call it purple. There's only one purple-ish color because eight is, uh, is gray, I believe. And then, you know what? Yeah, and then nine is white. These ones tend to confuse me from time to time because gray and white are fairly similar and they're side by side. You know, these I can keep track of fairly easily because it's like the rainbow. So looking at this resistor, which is hard to do on camera or even in person because it's so small, sometimes you need to get magnifying glass. Uh, this is yellow, uh, purple, or violet, or whatever, and orange. Yellow is um, four, purple is seven, orange is three. But this is not a 473 ohm resistor. It uh, That's because the third digit here is how many, uh, it, they call it the multiplier digit, but it's how many zeros to add to the number that you already have. So three means add three zeros, like four, seven, zero, zero, zero. And that's 47,000 or engineering notation, 47K ohms. Oh, let's do another one I have on my desk. Let's see, this guy is yellow. I believe it's yellow. Um, I think that's okay. That's purple again, but this time the last one is black. So that's 470, which is not 470. That's 47 with zero zeros, um, or just 47 ohms. That's interesting that that happened to be so similar. Oh, this is a common one. Brown, black, orange. Brown, black, orange. Brown is one. Black is zero. Orange is three, which we already saw. And so that's three zeros or 10K. We see 10Ks all the time. So that's how the um, color code system works on resistors. That's probably like 90% of resistors. There are like a four digit and tolerance um, varieties of resistors. But you know, for all intents and purposes, this is what we see and um, oh yeah, and then the standard values, we usually see resistors with multiples of 1, 1 1.2, uh, um, 
1.8 to, yeah, sometimes we'll see, yeah, we'll see it to 2.2 um, .2 which is odd, you would think it would be 2.8, but it's not, it's 2.7, and then 3.3, 3.9, Four point seven, five point six. Uh, let's see, six point eight, seven. Um, I don't think there's anything in the seven. We actually just skip to. 8.1 perhaps? I might even have to look at my... 82, I believe it is. Someone could correct me on that. Um, and then we don't have anything for 9, we just go to 10, which is like back to 1. So you'll see, you'll see multiples of these. What I mean by that is not just 1.8, but also 18 or 180 thousand you know uh, but you will probably not see a 3.2 or a 32 ohm resistor and that's because of the overlap with the tolerances well I hope that that helps to uh, explain what resistors are and how to identify them and a little bit of how to use them um, uh, in another video, I talked about voltage dividers and their use cases. Uh, they're made from resistors, so that's one common application. They're used all over the place. You can pick up just about any circuit board and just start pointing to resistors. Um, if you have any questions, uh, just leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please like or subscribe. Thanks. Bye.